Okay, good morning everyone. This is Deborah Dragos and Susan Nisley at the Nebraska Library Commission and today we are going to be talking about the Overdrive Advantage Plus option that is available to um, the members of our consortium who are Advantage libraries. I'm going to actually open two different things here today um, to start with. And I'm not quite sure how familiar all of you are with using Marketplace, um, so I, I apologize <laughs> if I cover some information that you already know. But for those who might be watching the recording later, um, or those of you who are new, I'll just touch on several different things here that are, might be a little bit basic, okay? I will be using the Crete public library advantage account today. Joyce Stevenson was gracious enough to let us use her login um, because as a general rule Susan and I do not have access to the interface and I can't talk and type at the same time. Hang on one second. <laughs> we can't um, generally access the advantage interface to see exactly what kind of results you're getting when you're doing searches or running reports or things like that. But we've taken a little bit of time with uh, Joy's login and we've talked a little bit with the OverDrive uh, representatives. And so we're going to walk through some of the things that we've learned since eight of our libraries have taken advantage of the this particular um, program, the Advantage Plus option. And we do have a few people who are on the webinar today who have already done this process. So if you have any um, insights, suggestions, or que other questions, please let us know those also. Okay, so you can only be logged in with one login per uh, browser. So with Internet Explorer today, I've logged in with Joy's Advantage account, and I'm also going to log in to Firefox with a, um, a generic login on the consortium side so that we can pop back and forth and see the differences between the two interfaces. So half a second here. see if I get all of my passwords in correctly. Aha, okay. So the first thing that um, I do want to talk about, I'm not going to jump right into how do you create an, the, an Advantage Plus plan. I'm actually going to start by looking at what the library actually holds as far as Advantage titles go, okay? And, <clears throat> and I'm particularly looking at this because of um, something that we've learned since some of our Advantage libraries have created the Advantage Plus plans, okay? Um, if you haven't used the title status and usage report, before, I do highly recommend that you go in and take a look at this. And one thing that I'll really uh, um, promote this page for is that you use the report summary when you are doing your Advantage Plus statistics, or sorry, yes, your Advantage statistics for Bibliostat. We do pre-fill the number of items held by the OverDrive Consortium in Bibliostat for you, but for those of you who purchase your own titles, you do need to add those numbers in. And this is um, this report summary is a really great way to do that. My only ca caveat is that you do have to look at these specific numbers as close to the end of your fiscal year as possible. Okay, and. If you can do that, all you have to do is just add up the numbers that are here for the different types of lending models and you have 
your number of items. Although I do recommend that you run the report one time, and you can always run a new report, that you run the report one time for audiobooks and one time for the ebooks, just so that you can get your numbers straight that way. Okay, so as far as what the holdings are for Crete, I am going to actually come in here and say I want advantage titles only because the report that came up by default was the last report that was run and it did include the consortium numbers as well as the advantage. So I'm going to restrict this just to advantage titles only and I am actually going to um, limit this to ebooks, okay? Just to start with. So I'll click update. And it can take a couple seconds to load occasionally, okay? So you can see that over time Crete has bought 698 separate titles for ebooks. Oops, it didn't run correctly. Hang on just one second. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the correct report. <laughs> I, 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 I apologize if I sometimes get confused. Susan and I have talked about this several times. We're so used to the consortium uh, view that it, it's sometimes confusing when we come into the advantage. Okay, these are advantage uh, owned titles, okay, by this library. And if you look over the separate columns, you can see that if you look at it online, it does combine the consortium numbers and the advantage numbers. So you'll see that in the, under the owned column for the first title, the consortium doesn't own any copies, but Crete owns one copy. For the next one, the consortium owns three copies and Crete owns one copy. And it's the same way all the way across. The, the, backslash divides those two numbers, okay? The second column is something that is new because our, some of our libraries have started using the Advantage Plus program. And you'll notice if I skip down here to this line, it says two slash zero. That means that on the consortium side, two other Advantage libraries have shared copies of this particular title but Crete, or the login the, for the library that I'm uh, currently using, has not shared any, okay? If I go in and take a look at this particular title record, I can see that it does say the consortium owns five copies. There are the two Advantage plus shared copies, and if I click on that, it tells me which libraries have actually shared these titles, okay? You'll notice here there are three libraries actually listed. That's because at one time, this particular title was only offered on a metered 12-month uh, lending model, okay? When Stromsburg's copy has since expired and they have not purchased a new one. So it says shared units are zero, okay? And we'll come back to that in just a second, the, the fact that some titles do expire and what we would like you to uh, take a look at doing with those, okay? And it does show that Crete does own a copy and Crete's uh, patrons have checked out this title eight times. That doesn't mean that they have checked out the Advantage copy eight times. It means that between the consortium copies and the Advantage copy, they have checked out this title eight times. Okay. Um, I did want to show you what the difference is if you go into the consortium login, into your consortium login, and take a look at this same title. And we want the ebook here. So this time it shows the, um, for the advantage, it shows that overall 14 
copies are held by Advantage libraries. Okay, Three of those copies are out. We don't know which libraries have them out or which libraries patrons have them out. There are two patrons from Advantage libraries, not necessarily patrons of um, the libraries that bought one of these 14 copies, but just two patrons who belong to Advantage libraries that have a hold on this particular title. And overall, between all of the Advantage libraries, their patrons have checked this title out 462 times. Okay, so that's just a bit of a difference between the two um, the two different logins. Okay, if I go back to the title status and usage page, I just wanted to point out also if you click the number two there, you can also see which of the libraries um, are sharing those their copies of this particular title, okay? Um, so, I wanted to show one more title. That particular title was one that went from a 12-month uh, metered to a purchasing one copy, one user. I also wanted to point out that if you have a title that has the 26 checkouts, which this one is, The Allegiant by Veronica Roth, which is a very another very popular title. Um, in this particular case, um, the consortium has run out of copies. Okay, Crete does have some copies, some checkouts left. They have actually 17 checkouts. Okay, if I go to the consortium login okay you'll see that actually there are 17 libraries that currently have checkouts that are still left on this particular title okay we have not purchased an additional 26 checkouts at the consortium level because currently there are no holds. If a hold did come up, I would normally go in and purchase another 26 checkouts. Um, I'm the one who does try to follow up on, <laughs> on all those, but I was holding off on a few, not this one because there weren't any holds, but I was holding off on a few that have run out of checkouts because um, there are so many Advantage libraries who have copies with checkouts on them. So I wanted to give libraries a chance to share some of those before I spend the consortium money buying additional checkouts, but that's something that um, in a month or two I'll follow up on again for those titles that do have holds where we need to determine if we need to purchase another set of checkouts or not. Okay. Okay, back to our um, Advantage login here. One of the other things that I wanted to show you is, sorry, I'm reading through my notes. <laughs> um, I'm just going to jump to this one really quickly um, and show you that this is one that the consortium still owns four metered copies. You'll see that it is 12 months and the last one that we have won't expire until May of 2018. So we have this particular title covered at the moment. But it was on the title status and usage report even though it shows that there, this, there are no copies currently held by this Advantage library because at one time the library had purchased a 12-month uh, license, but it has now expired, okay? If the library shared this particular title, it would just show up up here under the Advantage Plus as library shared zero units, okay? In this case, it wouldn't be that important because this is a 
title where the consortium owns several copies and it's popular enough that we will continue to buy them as they are needed. However, there are some titles where the, um, the title has only been purchased by that particular Advantage library. The consortium has not purchased it and it has expired. In that case, if the library shares it, it shows up on the patron interface without any copies. And then people can place holds on it. And if it wasn't a really popular title in the first place with that particular Advantage library, I would suggest that you not share it, okay? so. The reason, uh, another reason that I suggest that you look at the title status and usage report is because you can do some um, searching that allows you to know ahead of time what has run out and what you might not want to share. Okay, so I'm going to update this report to just those ebook titles that were purchased um, on a 12-month basis and that came up with 157 and this time because you can't really sort when you've got columns that combine numbers I am going to do the create a worksheet and I will open that and you'll notice in the spreadsheet that you get that all of those numbers are divided out. So now we have the numbers for the consortium and then we have the numbers for this particular Advantage library, okay? And a lot of these columns you don't really need, <laughs> but they give you all kinds of information. So I'm going to do a couple things quickly here to try to make it a little easier to follow. I'm going to freeze some panes here and I'm going to hide some panes here, some columns, and I am going to do a custom sort, and I want to sort it by advantage owned, and then I'm going to add a couple levels here. I'm going to sort it by consortium owned, and then by lending model. Okay? Okay, so now you can see that the first series of titles, the license has expired for the Advantage Library, and the consortium has either never purchased these or they, um, we have let it lapse if it has expired and we have let them lapse, okay? So in this case, I would suggest that when you actually do create the plan for Advantage Plus, that you exclude these titles so that they are never shared with a consortium. Now, if there's one of them that you think was a really good book that the consortium should consider purchasing for everyone, you can suggest that, but otherwise I would say um, just don't share them with the, the group, with the consortium plus, the Advantage Plus, okay? Uh, keep scrolling down here and I'm going to move over just a little bit to make it easier to see here, the, the owned, etc. Okay, now you see that the consortium does own these particular titles at this point in time, but the Advantage license has expired. So these also, you really don't need to share. You could exclude them, um, and you can exclude them title by title. If you run this report, it's easy then when you're in the plan to just click them all to say exclude, okay? There are a few down here that I'm going to keep scrolling here till we hit the titles where the Advantage library actually still has a current license for these particular titles, okay? <clears throat> Sorry. 
So some of these you'll notice also the consortium owns copies, but there are a few right in here where the consortium does not own copies. These also I would ask you to take a look at to see are, were they popular, are they something that you think really should be in the collection, and decide whether you really want to share them or not, okay? So that's a look at the title status and usage report. And are there any questions so far? Um, I think you've answered them all. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so let me um, go back here just one second. Oh, okay. The next thing I wanted to share, just for informational purposes, because I know we've had some questions in the past, I'm going to go into the circulation activity uh, report here for just a second. Okay, and you know, you remember too that every time you go into one of these reports, it does run the report based on the last criteria that you set. So you can always just go in and run a new report for whatever you want to um, look, search for. And I am actually going to search by a, cre by a creator, an author's name, just to show you some of the differences that you get between reports, if I can type that is and talk. Okay, so Nicholas Sparks, I'm looking for one particular title called The Lucky One. So I am going to say, give me the checkouts by title, and I am going to say, um, show me only from my only checkouts by my Advantage users on my Advantage own titles. Okay, so I'll click update. Maybe I did some. Oh, and one thing you, you learn, I have tried to learn from this is patience, <laughs> because some sometimes reports take longer than I think they should. Okay, here we go. Okay, so for the lucky one, it says that there are 14 checkouts. So I'm going to click on that number and scroll down. And as you can see under the bought by, all of the checkouts listed were for the Advantage copy that was purchased by Crete. Okay, I'm going to run an, another report. And this time I'm going to say show all checkouts and I'm going to limit it to Crete Public Library. Okay. And this time the lucky one says 18. Okay. And if we look at each of those checkouts, this time you'll notice that there were some of the checkouts that were for the consortium copy as opposed to the um, advantage copy. Okay, so if I actually went into the lucky, eh, I'll do the whole thing, the lucky one. Okay, you'll notice it does say 18. Okay, so this number is a combination of both the consortium copies and any advantage copies that were purchased. Okay, okay, so moving on, I am going to go back up here to admin and click on Advantage Plus. Now, <clears throat> If you have not gone in and actually run a plan or created a plan yet, when you go in, you'll no, you should probably not see the review titles button. That's showing up because I did create a plan to play with uh, for Crete, and then I deleted it. Okay, so when you go in the first time, it'll probably just say uh, 
it could just say create and, and delete. I didn't actually take a screen, screenshot of that one, <laughs> but once you've created a plan, you can review titles. Depending on the settings that you used, you can edit your plan or you can delete your plan. You can only have one plan at a time, okay? So besides that on this screen, there's all kinds of fine print. Just warning you that, hey, if you actually mark something to be shared, it's shared and it cannot be reversed, okay? So that's the important part. When you click Create New, it brings up a screen with a number of options. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom just to show you right off the bat that under Scheduling, the default is no, I prefer this plan man, to run this plan manually, review eligible titles, and select the ones to share. When you first start, I really recommend that you leave it as the no, I prefer to run this plan manually. You can set it up to run automatically, and we'll talk about that a bit more in a, in a few minutes. But to start with, we're going to leave it as manual. Okay, so I'll go back up to the top and we'll take a look at some of the different options that you can set. Okay, the first one is do you want to exclude titles based on their latest checkout date? Okay, we had, I, we had a discussion with the OverDrive people over the use of the word exclude. They actually use it in two different ways. Here, when they say exclude, they mean when I, you run the plan, the titles don't show up, okay? When you get into reviewing titles and you say ex exclude, that means they will never show up again for you to consider, okay? So just keep that in mind, okay? So what are they allowing you to exclude at this point in time? They are allowing you to exclude titles that were checked out first within the last X number of months. So I could say um, exclude all titles that were checked out within the past six months, okay? The next one is do you want to exclude titles with active checkouts? I could say yes if I wanted to. Do you want to exclude titles with active holds? Again, you could say yes. Next, okay. So what happens if you're running this plan automatically, okay? As soon as a title um, reaches seven months without being checked out, um, it will show up in the review titles. If you're, or sorry, if you're doing it automatically, as soon as the title exceeded six months from the last checkout, it would automatically share it. If you were doing this manually, it would then show up on your review titles list, okay? So as long as your plan, you have not deleted your plan, when a title um, no longer meets the, the exclusion filters that you've chosen, it will show up to be shared, okay? Okay, then you have collection development, development policies. And first it says, do you want to include all formats? And you could say yes or you could say no. And I'm going to choose to do just the eBooks uh, for the first plan. And just one little quirk I want to point out, you do have to click the radio button before you can choose one of the options. It won't let you choose an option and automatically click that radio button, okay? Then it asks, do you want to include all lending models? And you can narrow it down or you can exclude um, any of the uh, different uh, setups for one copy, one user, metered access by time, etc. Then it asks, do you want to include titles based on their on sale date? So if something went on sale uh, a year ago, uh, or less than a year ago, then you could say, no, I don't want to, um, to include those titles, okay? 
The next one is, do you want to include titles based on their date added to the Advantage collection? Okay, so you might say, um, this title is four years old, but I only bought it six months ago, so I don't want to uh, let, I don't want to share it at this point. I want to wait until it's been available to my patrons for at least a year. So that's also an option. The last one under collection development is do you want to include pre-order titles? And that's uh, by default a no, which I recommend, but you could also say yes. And then the last one was the uh, scheduling. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and click Save, and it will put me back to the original front page, but this time Oh, sorry. <laughs> it gives you more fine print first. It's saying, do you really want to do this? So then you can look through and make sure that you set everything in the way you wanted it, and you click Save This Plan. And then it puts you back to the first front page. And now you'll see that the Review Titles and the Edit button are highlighted. So I'm going to click the Review Titles button. And this will give me the list of titles that met my criteria. And this is going to take a little bit because I said um, I didn't limit it by lending model, so it's giving me basically all of the ebooks that. Um, have not checked out for a while. Okay, So you get another report that is in columns and I'll point out a few quirky things about this. In your other reports with a down arrow you often get a drop down menu that says um, sort by and you know A to Z or sort descending, sort descending, or it gives you an option for columns, which gives you another dialog box, which which lets you eliminate some of these columns that are sometimes extraneous and you really don't want to be bothered with. That doesn't work here. It just sorts. You don't get the option to change the number of columns. Okay, and I since it's. Um, Okay, <laughs> sorry, uh, this is going to take a minute because, there we go, not too long. It does do up and down, whichever way you want. Uh, uh, it basically toggles. If, you, if it's, you tell it, click it and it goes up once, click it again and it goes down, okay? The other thing about this page is you'll notice it's really long and it runs off my particular screen. You have to scroll all the way to the bottom to get a scroll bar to move over to see your other columns, which isn't terribly convenient, but at least they've frozen the first column, which actually you can resize so that you can see a bit more information. Or you can always reduce and I might have to go even further um, until you get everything on the screen or if you really don't want to play with it this way you can move your column whoops here move up here Deborah come up here and you can actually create a worksheet and then look at that to see all of the columns before you decide um, which ones you want to select to either exclude or to share, okay? <clears throat> okay, so I am actually going to do um, one more thing. I am going to increase the number of titles that are displayed. The default is 50. You can increase the it up to a thousand uh, lines per screen, but any of these settings don't stick. Um, you have to continually reset them. If you go to a different page, if you um, go out, if you uh, <laughs> do a variety, if you 
venture away from this page in any way, it makes you redo these settings, a number of these, these settings. Okay, so I increased the number so that I could more easily find this particular title, the Cloud Searchers. In this case, the title is one that was on that title and status and usage report. It has never been owned by the consortium. There is a license that is active for Crete, but it is going to expire in just a little over four months. So in this particular case, I would probably not include this one to be shared because after it has expired, it will not disappear from the patron website, okay? And that means people could continue to put holds on it. It won't show up in a report easily for um, those of us who manage OverDrive to find. We have to dig through a number of different reports to find these hidden uh, titles that have holds on them. So I would recommend, in this case, just excluding that title. And it comes back and it says, are you really sure? It, once it's excluded, it can't be reversed. That's okay. I got Joyce permission, <laughs> so I'm going to exclude this title. And it can take a minute. Okay, and now that particular title is gone from the list. It will never show up on a list again. Okay, you will never uh, have another chance to share that particular title. Okay, I could then go through and click any of these and click share, but at this point, um, I'm going to leave that up to Joy and I'm going to return to the main page and I'm going to say I want to edit this particular plan because I'm going to do one more. I'm going to take off ebook and I'm going to select audiobook. Okay, and I'm going to leave everything else the same and I'm going to click save and it comes up again and tells me, okay, here are the filters that you have on now, and I will say save this. And then I should have a new review titles list. And sometimes I feel like doing the Jeopardy song while I'm waiting. <laughs> okay, here we go. This time um, I am going to do a slightly different search. And I, let me try going back down to 75% again, see if that will help. Um, no. Okay, so we're going to have to scroll over. What I wanted to do was show you this title, the next to the last title that says available for sale. Sometimes publishers pull materials. So you'll notice there are seven titles, seven audiobooks that are no longer available. One of them actually, um, oh, sorry, what am I looking for? Here we go. Uh, for some reason, Crete's been pulled from this one. I'll look at that later. Okay, what I wanted to point out is that sometimes when they are when a title is no longer available, you'll see that the consortium owns a copy and it is out. Okay, and I'm actually, oops, this wasn't the one I wanted. Sorry, there are too many Tolkien books here. I wanted, I 
And I'll tell you, sometimes things change from one day to another in Marketplace. That's okay. I'll pick this one. <laughs> and I'm sure Joy will forgive me um, if I go ahead and, and uh, use this particular one. Okay. Crete owns a copy of The Hobbit. It is not checked out. It has not been checked out in the last six months, possibly longer than that. The consortium copy is out, and there are seven holds. The consortium cannot buy another copy. So this particular one could be shared with the consortium then and would help relieve the, um, the number of holds that are on this one. So we could just go ahead and click this one and say share. Okay, and we'll say again, it wants you to confirm that this particular one is going to be shared and you it cannot be taken back. Okay, so it is working away. And has been shared. Okay. So any questions on that portion? I'm going to return back to the Advantage Plus screen again. And I will say, I'll go ahead and do this. If you, um, if you want at any time, you can delete a plan. And it again asks you, are you sure you want to do this? And I say, OK. And now it goes back to, do you want to create a plan? OK. Questions? Um, there are no outstanding uh, questions that have been typed in the question box, so. Okay. Um, I do have another thing to show you in the patron side that I just wanted to bring to your attention. I'm going to do a search here. Okay. This is the particular title where two copies have been shared by Advantage Plus Libraries. And you'll notice the consortium owned five. There were two shared. So it now says there are seven copies available. It does not list the number of people waiting per copy. Um, this is a side effect, I guess you'd call it. Any title where an Advantage Library has shared copies no longer lists the, um, the average number of people waiting per copy. If I put a hold on this right now, it would tell me where I, what number I am in the list, but I can't see up front how many people are waiting. Okay. So I think, unless Susan, you had something else, that was the majority of what I had listed to cover. Um, the only th comment that I would have is just a follow-up to what you just said. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this does, um, I'm sure everybody's had those experiences where a patron has been on hold for a certain what seems to them like a very long time and they think they're about to get um, get the title that they're next on the list. If the title that they have on hold, um, if the, if, um, you know, some, if this is an advantage shared title and one of the advantage libraries patrons put a hold on it, that can jump them up. Isn't that correct? Yes. So there could be a little bit more moving around and changing in that hold list for those advantage shared titles than we're used to otherwise. Right. Right. Yeah, that average number um, doesn't, <laughs> isn't an exact number. Yeah. Um, and yes, if somebody's number four on the holds list, and there is an advantage copy shared, 
and an advantage library patron puts a hold on and becomes number five if that advantage copy becomes available before the consortium before four consortium copies become available number five will hop up and take that advantage copy did that make sense I think so, so. <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so yes if you share um, advantage titles your patrons still have priority access if it is checked out by someone else they do will have to put a hold on that title but the next time that copy becomes available your patron will get that advantage copy yes Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we do have eight libraries that have shared titles, and we uh, really appreciate that. That's, that took the pressure off on a lot of different titles that are in hot demand. And if you pay attention to the lender compensation statistics that go out quarterly, um, you may have noticed that a few of our libraries did get quite a chunk of money uh, considering that we are only paying 10 cents per loan for any advantage copy that is loaned to a patron from another consortium library so um, you can always contact Susan or I if you have questions um, we're always we try to be very responsive sometimes one of the other of us are on the road or off doing something else but we try to follow up on things fairly quickly so please feel free to contact us if you do need help with anything um, and if there are no other questions Susan I guess we'll wrap it up and call this a day Okay, and I'll just mention that, and, and you already mentioned this at one point, but if you call us with questions about your advantage uh, statistics, we're probably going to have to ask you for your advantage login so we can get in and see what you're seeing. And Right. It makes it much easier if we're looking at the exact same thing because the consortium results, on the consortium login, the results can look very different. Yes. Okay, thank you everybody. We'll talk to you again sometime soon, we hope. See you on the road. <laughs> okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.